Nobody wins when the family feels Just right now, about to fly to Gravedigger Mountain. Eight hour notice, and now we're here. So we're gonna go hang out with uh, one of the most prolific rappers of our lifetime in Utah. Interviews, hey, come on Gravedigger Mountain and talk to me, nigga. You can't, if you can't do that, man, hey, you made, nigga, shut your phone. I'm on Gravedigger Mountain, you hear me say? But nobody can hear your scream. <laughs> it's crazy that the story we're about to talk about got some similarities to Pablo Escobar, which we'll later discuss. We're also going to find out that I don't care who you is, whether you're getting your money legally or illegally. Once you put some people off, they coming to get you. Family, today we talk about a Louisiana rapper who turned Utah into Gravedigger Mountain, especially to the hip hop community. Even going as far as posting billboards on public transportation, airports, even bus stations with a picture of this rapper that, quote, Welcome to Grave Digger Mountain. It's a huge no-no. We're talking about a young man that his talents allowed him to be on house arrest by the feds in a home that have just as much acres as a local college, using that time to create many videos while on house arrest in the past three years. Now fam, the reason I said at the very beginning, this have similarities to Pablo Escobar. Who remember the drug kingpin from Medellin, Colombia? Some may remember of the Netflix series, but after striking a deal with the local government, he was able to build his own jail and be housed in it for years, overlooking his community and even controlling each and everything that comes in it, all while doing the same thing, selling narcotics. But in this case, it seemed it's the use. And at this point, it seemed that this Louisiana rapper may have overstayed his welcome, which we'll later discuss. But let's be real, family. Unless you have a squeaky clean image, I don't care who you is. Going to a state calling it Grave Digger Mountain, you put a target on your back. For the locals and their kids who not fans of hip hop, is a huge no no. And from that day on, you made yourself a target, especially in that state. And this driver who was on probation by the feds was put up in the mountains to stay away from trouble. Now, in the last 24 hours, it seemed this same rapper who was on probation by the feds for charges we'll later discuss now has a RICO charge with over 60 plus counts in the indictment in the state of Utah after he was allegedly playing doctor alongside his entourage to receive prescription drugs, even going as far as continue to do so after being tipped that the authorities know and how he got caught by his own statement. I can't make this up. So in this video, we go over the charges, hear from the person who called authorities after being tipped off about his pharmacy and what his rapper stands at today. So before we go over this one, remember, I don't give you no angle. I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to jump right to it. Contrail Garden, NBA Young Boy. 24 years old from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, known for his raunchy lyrics and being in the lane of his own. A guy who literally run the charts of YouTube and would drop almost every day. He recently went viral for the controversial topic on a great platform, Bootleg Kid, where NBA Youngboy had mentioned he's not big on fatherhood. The guy with 11 kids have raised some concerns from the media. Check it out. Uh, you know, obviously, you do have a lot of children. You know, I've been around you to see in a short amount of time that you're a great father. How important is fatherhood to you, man? I'm not really big on it, to be honest. What do you mean by that? You're not big on it? I mean, you're a family man. I'm here with you. I see it. Yeah, but I'm only out. I'm only like in here because you here. Oh, well, I don't believe it. It's a crazy topic because I'm not the type like the sugarcoat nigga. But I'm four walls. Uh, had the media going for a couple days while facing backlash. He even had the personnel, Joe Button, speak up and say this. He is horrible. He is horrible. He is really, 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 really bad. As a rapper or a person? I'm not, I don't know him as a person. Oh, okay. I'm only speaking about music. Music. He's really, really, really bad. And that thing happened with him where when he was out, the label pushed a button and did some YouTube shit. So then all the little kids had to just come to the come to the gathering and tell you about NBA young boy views and how great he is and how awesome he is and how amazing he's doing. Now that the label's backed up a bit, and now that we done had about three or four projects while he's been in Utah on house arrest. He had way more than that. I know. And that's that, that I know. Of course, as you just heard, Joe Button said his music was trash, but he would recant on his statement, which you'll later see. But NBA Youngboy wasted no time to go on to social media and inviting Joe Button to do an interview on quote unquote Grave Digger Mountain. 
I said, I don't that piece about too many old niggas. Stupid, nigga. dumb, nigga. Hard no more counts, nigga. Like, ain't, no, ain't no sabotage that's wrong with that nigga, man. Don't rat on me. I'm, don't rat on me. And I don't want to argue with you, nigga. Hey, you should do all them interviews. Hey, come on, great nigga, man, and talk to me, nigga. You can't, bitch, if you can't do that, man, hey, you bitch, man, nigga, shut your mouth. As we mentioned, Joe Budden had recanted on that statement and he followed up with this apology. <laughs> and hell no. no. Nope. No. And let me tell you, watching the playback, <laughs> that shit is always a lot worse. <laughs> it's always a lot worse. I owe NBA Youngboy an apology too. Let's you start with accountability. Yeah. I owe him an apology. Yes. He don't even bother nobody. Mm. He don't even bother nobody. And the pod was over. In the meantime, Bootleg Kev had teased his fans another segment of the NBA Youngboy interview. But NBA Youngboy had intervened, saying in a tweet, don't put it out. He don't want his fans to feel like he's a drug addict. Now, NBA Youngboy been living in Utah for three years now on charges we're later discuss. And during that time, he was able to put out three albums. Safe to say, NBA Youngboy has been using his time wisely for the most part. The reason a rapper has been a 24-hour house arrest in Utah since after judging a federal case against him in his home, state granted him conditional release as he awaits trial stemming from an arrest in September 2020 involving several others. He was indicted by a federal grand jury as the feds picked up the case in March of 2021 for possession of two weapons. Under the terms of the Robert House arrest, he is only able to leave for court appearances, appointments pertaining to his mental health and employment related activities that have been approved according to court documents. Amid this federal case in Louisiana, NBA Youngboy was arrested for allegedly a possession of a weapon in Los Angeles in March of 2021, shortly after his indictment he went to trial for the LA case in July 2022 and was acquitted of all charges per court record. We're not sure how him being in violation would affect this Louisiana and federal case, but let's go over some key details. NBA Youngboy was last in court in March of 2024, which caused his case to be paused by a judge until Supreme Court rules on Second Amendment battle. Let me tell you why. Youngboy's lawyers say the law he's accused of breaking a ban on conviction felons possession firearms is unconstitutional under the Second Amendment, which protects the right to keep and bear arms. The pending Supreme Court case, meanwhile, would decide the constitutionality of a similar federal ban on gun ownership for domestic abusers. After years of house arrest, NBA Youngboy had finally been set for a trial in July, but as we mentioned, it was delayed, and it could be June of 2024 before the high court even rules on the pending case. But the delay might be worth it. If the Supreme Court rule against the gun restrictions in that case, it could greatly help NBA Youngboy beat his other charges together. As we mentioned, NBA Youngboy was in indicted by federal prosecutors in March of 2021 after he was allegedly found with two firearms during a September 2020 incident in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, outside his grandparents' house. He was charged with violating a long-standing federal law that bans convicted felons from ever again possessing firearms, a rule that applied to him as he was convicted in 2017 for aggravated assault with the firearm. In a motion two months ago, attorneys for the rapper argued that the charges against NBA Youngboy must be dismissed without trial because the federal ban violates the Second Amendment. They cited a landmark gun control ruling issued by the High Court in 2022 which struck down a New York State law that had placed strict limits on carrying guns outside the home. In a response this month, federal prosecutors sharply disagreed, arguing that the gun ban for convicts had already been upheld in hundreds of cases. And since then, he'd been out on bond on a $1.5 million bail. NBA Youngboy had 15 people on the government witness list to testify against him. In 2022, they used his songs against him with songs like Gunsmoke and his lyric which are relevant to NBA Youngboy knowledge and possession of a firearm in his case to identity and his song Life Support and his lyrics which according to the feds shows NBA Youngboy with shine jewelers and are thus relevant to his knowledge and possession of items found in his vehicle including a firearm and ammunition, as well as to the identity. NBA Youngboy also passed purchase at Shine Jurors, which are relevant to Mr. Garden's knowledge and possession of a firearm found in his vehicle. They using the image and the video of him and Shine Jewelers coming out his Maybach to take fault of the firearm that was allegedly with him when he ran from authorities after being captured in California. So now we caught up on this case on we yet today and waiting for a ruling to continue trial. NBA Youngboy get hit up with a Rico in Utah in the state he was put up in to keep out of trouble. Local authorities is accusing NBA Youngboy of playing fake doctor to get prescribed medicine, using his entourage to play a part. He was hit as we mentioned at the very beginning with over 60 charges in a new indictment. Now we're about to be transferred
transfer to Louisiana to finish his sentence. I think we should go over some of the facts of this new indictment and see how it could possibly affect him for good. April 16, 2024, at 2.50 p.m., NBA young boy Contrell Garden was arrested in Utah, aka Grave Digger Mount. Here are some of the details. One, him using the doctor and the identity, allegedly, of a person deceased to obtain these narcotics. And also, him telling officials after locating his vehicle through surveillance that the people who was picking up those prescriptions was his friends or family, which immediately was enough to the state of Utah, was enough to put NBA Youngboy in the RICO. With the latest happening on record just last month, 3-17-2024, having a fake doctor call for a prescription at Lurie's Pharmacy. The female named Gwendolyn Cox provided a birthday of 11 1949 sounded much younger, concerns to authorities. Another incident happened at Spence Pharmacies. Someone who arrived to pick up the prescription identified and known associates of NBA Youngboy picked up the prescription and were detained for their role in prescription fraud ring. However, on the investigation, was contacted by the Gwendolyn person again. Only gave a birth, month, and date. Authorities said sound like a young man, NBA Youngboy. Instead of using eggs because of his accent, it would sound like ax. Now you guys about to hear from one of the owners, but allegedly with the authorities after being victim, this alleged drug ring. Check it out. Singer and rapper NBA Young Boy faces dozens of charges. As we have reported, Mark, that he was taken into custody in Cache County, accused of organizing fraudulent drug prescriptions at Utah pharmacies, legally known as Kentrell Gald Galden. He's been on house arrest in Utah since 2021. Ariel Harrison live tonight after speaking with one of those targeted businesses, Ariel. Yeah, well, one pharmacist I spoke with said they thankfully didn't fulfill that order as they noticed some red flags, but unfortunately, others weren't so lucky. Now tonight, the young celebrity who already had a criminal history now faces more than 60 related charges to this alleged scheme. Pharmacy owner Eric Stewart says hearing news of an arrest in the fraud ring investigation involving his business was a relief. You know, I'm just happy that they were able to connect the dots. Last September, Stewart says his team at Reed's Pharmacy in Hiram got a call from someone claiming to be a doctor needing to fill a prescription, something he called the first red flag. You usually don't get a doctor calling in a cough syrup themselves. That'll be like a nurse or something. But then just their medical terminology was off the the quantities, the way they, you know, pronounce the things, um, everything was suspicious. Like Stewart's case, arrest documents reveal multiple other pharmacies across Utah were targeted too. According to investigators, callers linked to Young Boy would call in prescriptions using the name of a real doctor and provo in some cases, but giving fake patient information. Individuals would then pick up the order from pharmacies, mainly promethazine and codeine. These type of medications they're trying to get are regulated, so throwing a, a, a chink in the in the I guess process can really disrupt uh, potential opportunities to get the medication you actually need. Weber County Sheriff's teams helped take Galden into custody with federal partners just yesterday. We believe this to be several more months of work for us. Efforts local business owners like Stewart appreciate. But when it's on a bigger scale like this, it's more concerning, right? Uh, because they're pretty persistent and um, I mean, it's just a big disruption to us and it's just a headache for us to have to deal with. Look back on all this, we got people that's on probation, 800 square feet apartments. The fact that he was managed to be on probation by the feds, still was able to be housed, as we mentioned, more acres than some college campus. The privilege, nothing come to mind other than Pablo Escobar. Just like him, authorities had to come get him because he couldn't maintain the rules. The affidavit recommended 63 counts, 63 charges against NBA young boy, including two counts of obtaining identity fraud, prescription under false pretense, 20 counts of fraudery. Let's be real, fam. They could prove he was posing as a doctor but on federal probation. About to get real. If more developed, I'll keep you guys updated. This was the story. The Louisiana rapper who allegedly played doctor added to himself in jail. Talk to me in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And today, catch you guys on the next one.